Oaks, a house in the country which I rented for the summer. As an author, I write tales of mystery and murder. But the things that happened in this house were far more fantastic than any story I've ever had published. I brought a staff of servants from my city apartment and my maid, Lizzie Allen, who had been with me nearly 20 years. Lizzie! Yes, Miss Cornelia? Is the car ready? It's at the door. Look, Miss hmm? Cornelia, them servants you brought from the apartment are talking about walking out on us. Really? Well, I know they don't like it here, but I didn't uh, think it was that bad. Well, they've been hearing things about the killer that the police call the Bat and the murders that he committed here this past winter. Now people are saying that he's back again. Well, how can they be sure of that? Has he committed another crime? No, not yet, but that ain't saying that he won't. Here's something else. You've heard about the bats they have here. Animal bats, the kind that fly. Yes, yes. Look what it says in this magazine. This is a report from the State Health Department, and it says some of them bats is rabid. Well... And that ain't all. Now there's a rumor going around that it was the bat himself, the killer, I mean, that released the rabid bats in this neighborhood. Oh, that's ridiculous. Well, the housekeeper, the cook, the butler, and the upstairs maid don't think so. Well, I can't help what they think. If hysterical nonsense like that can scare them out of their good jobs, it's their loss, not mine. Come on, Lizzie, I've got to get to the bank. I'll drive directly to Zenith Bank, Warner. I'm afraid we'll have to hurry. It's near closing time. I'll get you there, Miss Van Gorda. Yeah. Miss Van Corder. How do you do, Mr. Van? How are you? I'm very well, thank you. You remember Lizzie Allen? Of course. Hello, Miss How Allen. How do you do? So you're spending the summer with us yes, again? Yes, yes. I've leased the Oaks, the home of your bank president, John Fleming. I heard you had. I was surprised. Why? Is there something the matter with it? <laughs> no. I was surprised because Mr. Fleming said he would never rent it. Oh? Well, I rented it from his nephew, Mark Fleming, who has the real estate office here. He said his uncle would be gone the entire summer. Well, that's right. Mr. Fleming's in the North Woods now with his physician, Dr. Wells. Oh, pardon me. Dale, I want you to meet my wife. We were married at Christmas time. That must have been nice. Believe me, it was. Oh, here she is. Uh, my wife, Miss Van Gorder, Miss Allen. How do you do, Miss Allen? How Bailey? do you do? Cornelia <laughs> Van Gorder. Yes. Oh, well, I've read every murder mystery you've ever written. I just adored that weird one, The Private Morgue of Dr. X, even though it gave me the shivers. <laughs> Only the shivers? Scared hell out of me. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, I, I, I really mean that uh, Miss Corny killed them off in that one. When you refer to my books, please don't call me Miss Corny. Pardon me, Mr. Bailey. Mr. Hines is here to see you. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Excuse me, please. Oh. Don't be strangers now. No, oh, no, we won't. Not. Oh, so you're a bride. Well, not quite. <laughs> not since Christmas. No, I'm sure I've seen you. Well, I, uh, I used to be my husband's secretary here in the bank. Of course I remember. May I welcome our most distinguished visitor back to Zenith? Oh, that's very charming, but... Um, uh, Lieutenant Anderson. Lieutenant Anderson, of course. Chief of Detectives of the Zenith Police Department. This is Miss Allen. Miss Allen. How do you do? Lieutenant Anderson is one of our favorite citizens. He's on the bank's board of directors. <laughs> Not bad for a policeman. You must have made a good thing of it. Oh, <laughs> well, I saved my money, if that's what you mean. <laughs> it's near closing time, and I've got some business in the safe deposit vault. Uh, uh, please come and see me, Mrs. Bailey. Oh, I'd love to. And you, Lieutenant. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Nice to meet you. My, what a charming woman. Hmm. She moved into the Oaks just the other day. <laughs> that house is a proper setting for a writer of mysteries. Oh, it certainly is. <laughs> Vic, what's the matter? Come in here, both of you. Hey, 
Andy, we're in trouble. Wendell Hines came in to pick up $350,000 worth of bonds that we were holding as collateral for a loan. They were kept in our special vault. Mr. Fleming and I are the only officers of the bank who have access to that vault. So? The Hines bonds are gone. That's not all. Other negotiable securities are missing. From what I can gather short of a careful check, the bank has been looted of over a million dollars worth of securities. You'll have to notify Fleming. I wish I could talk to him. Unfortunately, he and Dr. Wells are deep in the woods. They can't be reached by phone. What is it? I thought I heard someone on the path coming from the lake. I had an idea it might be that guide of ours. Oh, Sam won't show up until morning. It's a 20-mile canoe trip from here to civilization. Five will get you ten. Sam has a message for me. I thought you told him at the bank not to bother you. I did, but they'll bother me. Doctor. Yes, John. What would you do for half a million? Anything short of murder. Why not murder? Too messy. Too great a risk? For half a million? Yes. I pinched a million from the bank. Well, I'm not kidding. I embezzled it. Not that I think you wouldn't do it if you thought you could get away with it. I got away with it. I'm not talking about currency. I took negotiable securities that could be converted into cash. I have the cash. In tens, twenties, and hundreds. Well, I'm your doctor, not your lawyer. Why tell me this? You'll find out why. Who's going to take the blame for the robbery? Bailey, the cashier. They'll never suspect me. I like Bailey. Well, so do I. I love the guy. I gave him his first chance. And he has a lovely little wife. Uh, charming girl. Was the best man. Where's the million? In my family's tomb in Zenith, in the crypt with my father's casket. I don't buy that, John. No? No. You forget that I had you in charge when you were a very sick man, when you raved in delirium. And I heard you talk about a hidden room. Now, where else could you put a hidden room except in that mansion you built, that uh, white elephant you call the Oaks? Look, everyone knows I have a bad heart. Now, who would doubt it if you wired the bank directors that my heart had failed, that I had fallen from a great height here in the woods, and that I was badly smashed up? You could uh, ship the body back for burial and uh, instruct them not to open the casket due to the condition of its contents. Well, you realize, of course, that uh, we'd have to have a body to put in that casket, which means that we'd have to deal with an undertaker at this end. Of course. Well, where do we get a body? Couldn't we provide one of our own? How about Sam? Sam, our guide? Sam weighs about as much as I do. He's practically a hermit. He wouldn't be missed for a long time. The local undertaker would know him. Not if we made him look as if he'd been in a serious accident. But if Bailey's going to take the blame, why do you have to do this? A jury might acquit him. In that case, I'd be a logical suspect. I could disappear, of course, but it's safer if they think I'm dead. What if I don't go for this deal? In that case, it would be too bad. You mean you'd kill me? What else could I do? Now that I've told you about the million, I'd say you were shot in a hunting accident. Now look, doctor, if you can find another body instead of Sam's, it's all right with me. There's half a million in it for you. I'll do my best. I smell smoke. So do I. What's that noise? Look, Doctor, the woods are on fire. It's 
coming this way. We've got to get out of here. Out the back way. We will. As soon as I provide that body we were talking about. and it's gonna be a snorter. The wind nearly blew the door off its hinges. Well, that noise blew my game higher than a kite. I think I've lost some of the cards. Oh, I'll get them for you. Oh, I see you found the paper. Oh, drat that paper boy. Scooting by on his bicycle, just chucked it into a clump of bushes and let it go at that. For land's sake, Mr. Vic Bailey's been arrested. Oh? I think. Victor Bailey, vice president and cashier of the Zenith Bank, was arraigned before United States Commissioner Alvin Fielding, charged with the embezzlement of over a million dollars. I can't believe Vic Bailey had anything to do with that robbery. Oh, well, I see our landlord is home again. Landlord? Mr. Fleming. Dr. Malcolm Wells is back in town with the body of John Fleming, president of the Zenith Bank who was killed in a forest fire. Mr. Fleming will be laid to rest in his family's tomb on Friday. And I hope he stays there. Well, why shouldn't he? Well, this is his house. And ever since he died, some funny things have happened here. For instance? The housekeeper, the cook, and the butler said that they heard strange noises at night. And the upstairs maid swore that she met a man without a face coming up the back stairs. Oh, so that's why they quit and left me to run this place without a staff. They didn't tell you, Miss Corny, but the truth is they were scared to stay. But you are still here, Lizzie. Haven't you seen anything? No. No, and even if I had, I ain't afraid of ghosts. They're afraid of me. Honest, Miss Corny, a spiritualist told me once that ghosts was allergic to me. This bat feller they keep talking about in the paper, I... I guess he'd be different. No, I don't think you'd have the same effect on him. Oh, dear. What are they trying to do? Drive people away from this part of the country? Why, what does it say about the bat? Specialty seems to be killing women. My goodness, two of them in one night. All his victims died the same way, like their throats had been ripped open with steel claws. That's a charming little caper. I'll have to try it sometime. In a book. That ain't nothing, just something bumping against the house. That's just the wind banging a door. Pay no attention to it. Listen to this. One of his victims who lived for a moment after she was found described the bat as a man without a face. Honest, Miss Corny, I think that woman must have been exaggerating. heavy tapestry at the top of the stairs. I know, I know. I've heard it before on a windy night. That sounds as if there was someone on the stairs. I know there isn't. At least there shouldn't be. There ain't. Them's just the noises you hear in any old house on a windy night. It says here that the bat never leaves no fingerprints. That's understandable. Having no face, he probably has no fingers either. Lizzie! And that, I suppose, is the cat dropping its dentures. No. No, I don't think so. But I think it's something should be looked into. Now, who chucked 
Tim down here. The wind, I hope. There must be a window open up there. No, it is he. Let him lay. Let him sleep it off. I, I hope the power lines don't go down. Put the lights out. Now, we'll check the windows in the living room and draw the curtains, and then we'll go to bed. Yes, ma'am. Are you okay? Yes, ma'am. I'm... I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> Operator? Give me the police department, please. Zenith Police Department. This is Cornelia Van Gorder. I'm living at the Oaks. We know about that, Miss Van Gorder. Just a moment ago, a man tried to force his way into this house. You're not alone there, are you? What about your servants? Well, I have none except uh, my chauffeur, and he's away. He won't be back until the morning. Now, there's only two of us here tonight, and we're going to lock ourselves in my room. Now, uh, if, if any of your men see anything, will you have them call me? I'll send officers over there right away. Well, thank you very much. Come on, Lizzie. We're going to sleep in my room. Nothing can get at us in this room now, I think. This door seems good and solid. Mm -hmm. Like the door to a tomb. Uh, I think that couch will be comfortable. There's some extra bedding, you know. In yes, closet. Please. tries to open this transom, this will be knocked off, and we'll hear it fall. I forgot my night things, my robe, my gown, and my slippers. I'll go get them now. Now, wait a minute, Lizzie. I'll go with you. Now, don't you bother, Miss Cornelia. My room's just down the hall. Lizzie, I told you to wait. It's all right. I'll only be a second. <laughs> get in here. Get in Yes? Miss Van Gorder? Yes? Zenith Police Department. There's a police car just outside your house, and the officers in it have reported that there's no sign of a prowler anywhere on the grounds. Well, the man's inside now. He's in the hall, just outside my bedroom. I have your men break through the kitchen door and search this place from top to bottom. Okay, Miss Van Gorder. Sit tight. I will. I have a gun, and I know how to use it. Relax. 
relax, Lizzie. The police did a good job. They couldn't find anybody in here. But we both saw him, Miss Cornelia. All right, all right, so he got away. But there are men on guard outside, so just try and get some rest. There's nothing can get at us here. Dr. Malcolm Wells' oh. office, please. Now, I don't know his number, and I have no phone book up here, but this is an emergency. Will you connect me with his office, please? Oh, dear, oh, dear. I'm going to get the rabies. Hello? Hello? Uh, Dr. Wells' office? This is a call service. Dr. Wells is out at the moment, but if you'll give me your name and number, I'll try to locate him. Well, this is Miss Van Gorder of the Oaks. My maid has just been bitten by a bat that may be rabid, and she must have treatment as soon as possible. And I was told that Dr. Wells was the nearest physician. I'll try to find him for you. And if I can't, I'll send you another doctor. Oh, well, thank you very much. Oh, he's out on a case. Oh. Oh, I hope it's not a delivery. A baby, I mean, they can be terribly complicated. It never bothered me none. Oh, Lizzie, you never had a baby. Of course I didn't. And that's why they never bothered me. Oh, does it hurt, huh? A little. Dr. Wells. This is your call service, Doctor. Oh, hello. I, I was just doing an experiment. I left the receiver off. That's what I thought, but I kept trying. Miss Van Gorder at the Oaks called and said that her maid had been bitten by a bat, and she's afraid it might be rabid. What? Oh, all right. Uh, tell her I'll be right over there.
Who's there? Dr. Wells. Oh. Come in. Good evening. Oh, I'm so glad they found you, Doctor. Well, I reached my office shortly after you called. How is your maid? Is she in any pain? No, no, she doesn't seem to be. Did the bat get away? No, I, I believe it's still in my bedroom. Oh, good. I want to examine it. Now, there you go, Miss Allen. Now you'll feel better. Doctor, have I got the rabies? Well, I can tell you better after I've examined the bat's brain under a microscope. That thing's got a brain? Oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> well, where is it? I think the little darling is in that closet. Oh. You know, it's a pity you leased this house, Miss Van Gorder. Why a pity? Well, my dear lady, I don't want to alarm you, but... Oh, well, after tonight, nothing can alarm me. Yes, I understand. It must have been terrifying. So many unexplainable things have happened here. There's something about the place. Your servants must have sensed it when they walked out on you. An apprehension of disaster. Well, let's see. Aha, yes. There he is. All right, now, take it easy. Nobody's going to hurt you. Quiet now. Quiet. And he looks quite normal. Doesn't seem to be sick at all. Oh, ain't that nice. I've been worried about him. Well, you should be. From his appearance, I'd say that he doesn't have any infection. In which case, you've had a narrow escape. Now, you take one of those tablets I left for you, and I'll guarantee you a good night. And I'll drop in on you tomorrow. Oh, thanks for everything, Doctor. Now, don't worry. I can find my way out. Oh, I know you can, but do let me help you. Oh, don't forget that once I'm gone, you'll have to climb those stairs alone. Oh, I'm all right. I'm armed now. Can you, uh... Shoot one of those things without shutting your eyes? Oh, Doctor, there are guns in every book I've ever written. I don't write about things I'm unfamiliar with. <laughs> Lock the door, Lizzie. Good night. Yes, ma'am. Good night, Doctor. Accident? No, no, the wind blew him down. Oh. I think. Oh. Did you know that young Mark Fleming leased you this house without notifying his uncle? No. No, I didn't. Well, it doesn't matter now. John Fleming is dead and Mark's his heir. But if John were alive, he would warn you to leave here, Miss Van Gorder. Really? Yes. It's been a tragic place for anyone who ever lived in it. Well, good night. Good night, Doctor. Who's out there? Nobody you need worry about, Doctor. Oh, it's Andy. Oh. That's right. Oh, good evening, Miss Van Gorder. Good evening, Lieutenant. Is somebody sick here? Uh, my maid was bitten by a bat. Oh? A rabbit bat? Well, I'll know for sure when I get to my lab. I, I caught the bat. It happened indoors? In my bedroom. Yes. How'd it get in? Well, there are many ways a bat could get in a house. You ought to know. I, uh, I spotted this hole in the window the minute I got here. Why? That's where the two-legged bat got your door open. Miss Van Gorder told me that she uh, phoned headquarters at Zenith. Yes, I phoned twice. The second time was after the prowler got in the house. Weren't headquarters handy? No, but they contacted me. An officer came and searched the house from top to bottom, but they couldn't find the bat. You, you better have this window fixed tomorrow. Oh, yes, I certainly shall. Yes, and I, I'd better be going. I, I'm due in surgery at 8 o'clock in the morning. Good night. Good night, Doctor. There'll be a man patrolling the grounds all night, Miss Van Oh, thank you. And nobody inside, Andy? Why should there be? Well, how do you know but what the bat is hiding somewhere in the house? I'm quite sure he isn't in the house, Doctor. Not now. Good night. Good night. Congratulations. <laughs> Real estate business must be big enough. <laughs> new office, new furniture. New deal. How do you like it? Uh, it looks expensive. Are you squandering your inheritance? <laughs> oh, I haven't got it yet. Well, the paper says John Fleming left his entire fortune to you. Funny thing about that entire fortune is that we can't find it. No kidding. Oh, all 
Uncle John had in his bank account was a couple of hundred dollars. And his safe deposit box was empty. If we don't find that missing million, mine will be empty, too. How come? Well, all my savings were invested in Zenith Bank stock. The examiners won't certify the bank is solvent until those stolen securities are found. So the stockholders have voted an assessment that will wipe some of us out. It's a sense those securities have been converted into cash. And if I can't find that cash, I'm sunk. Well, where are you going to look for it, Andy? Here in Zenith. Your uncle wouldn't take a million on a hunting trip, would he? You suspect Uncle John? Why, Andy, he founded the Zenith Bank. That'd be like robbing the family tomb. You think he wouldn't? Well, besides, Vic Bailey's fingerprints are all over the vault. Now, they didn't find any of Uncle John's fingerprints. Because he wiped them off. Can the defense prove that? They'll try to. Judy Hollander, Bailey's secretary, is a defense witness. And they believe her testimony will have a powerful effect on the jury. Oh, well, she has a powerful effect on me. Judy's a doll. Here's the book you mentioned, Judy. It's your newest one. Yes, it's just been published. You can have that copy if you wish. Oh, it's a first edition and you've signed it. Yes, of course. Thank you so much. Uh, may I serve tea now, Miss Van Gorder? Yes, please do, Warner. Thank you. Well, I see you've engaged new servants. Yes, of course. Well, how did you persuade them to live in this house? Well, Jane Patterson, my new housekeeper, knows this house better than you do, Doctor. Oh? She worked for John Fleming. And Warner was my chauffeur. A chauffeur turned butler? That's <laughs> incredible. <laughs> he can play any part at a moment's notice. Uh, did you, uh, did you get a plumber, Warner? No, we can't get a plumber for three days, madam. What about that leaking pipe? The basement will be flooded in three days. Well, the pipe is no longer leaking. You mean it's dried up of its own accord? No, not quite. I packed the elbow where the water was coming out. Packed the elbow? Well, where did you learn how to do that? Well, into each life, a little rain must fall, and a careful man learns to keep himself dry. Now, is there anything else that you require, Miss Van Gorder? No, not at the moment, Warner. Thank you, madam. <laughs> now, there's a character. How long did you say that he worked for you as chauffeur? About three months. Well, I hope he doesn't have a police record. <laughs> My dear Dale, it may interest you to know that the last night of his life, John Fleming told me that he loved your husband like a son. If Fleming were alive today, he would be fighting to prove Vic's innocence. Could Mr. Fleming prove his own innocence? Miss Van Gorder, can there be any doubt about it? There will be when Miss Hollander testifies at Vic's trial. Oh? You know something that we haven't heard yet, Judy? Something I saw with my own eyes. She's not permitted to say what it was. My dear girl, I wouldn't think of asking her. <laughs> but let's assume for a moment that Fleming did steal the million. Now, what would he do about it? Where is it? Hidden someplace where he could lay his hands on it without getting caught in the act. Now, if I was writing this, instead of living in the middle of it, I'd hide it right here in this spooky old house. Under a loose floorboard or up a chimney? <laughs> <laughs> if Mr. Fleming had the nerve to steal a million, he'd make his plans well in advance. I'd say he'd prepare a place to hide it. Possibly when this house was being built. Now, I rented this place for Mark Fleming, his nephew. I wonder... I wonder if he'd have the floor plans. I'll ask him. Yes. Lizzie, will you bring Mrs. Bailey the phone? Oh, you ask him now. Okay. His number is Summit, uh, is it Summit 7537. Oh, thank you, Lizzie. Summit 7537. Not bad, eh, Andy? That means new business. Now, you see, somebody wants to buy a house. Mark Fleming speaking. Oh, hello, Dale. Well, hang on a minute, honey, while I see if I have him. It's Dale Bailey, all excited. Miss Van Gorder wants to know if I have the floor plans of the Oaks. Now, what would she want with the floor plans? 
Well, she suggested to me that your uncle might have hidden the bank loot there. Are the plans here? Uh, somewhere in the house itself. Wait a minute, there is a place where Uncle Johnny might have kept those blueprints. What place? Well, I heard him talk about it a good many years ago. I can't be sure of the exact location. Anyway, I don't think the old boy had the guts to steal a million. But if I find those plans, I'll let you know, Andy. Hello, Dale. Look, honey, I haven't seen those plans since I was a kid, but I'll come over tonight and maybe we can find them. Thank you, Mark. We'll expect you. He seems to think they're here in the house somewhere. He's coming over tonight. Well, that's good. Dale and Judy are my house guests for the weekend. Uh, would you like to have dinner with us tonight? Oh, no, thank you. I, I couldn't. I still have a few calls to make. You know, if Judy's testimony is going to clear Vic Bailey and implicate John Fleming, others may get the idea that there's buried treasure in this house. Don't even mention your testimony until you're actually on the stand. Oh, I won't. That's a smart girl, Judy, and a very lovely girl. Well, good mm -hmm. afternoon, ladies. <laughs> Goodbye, Dr. Will. Come on, girls, let's go. Secretary Dale. Yes, I was. Do you take shorthand? Mm-hmm. Oh, my dear, if you'd like to have your mind occupied, I want you to work with me while I write the story of this fantastic criminal, the bat. It's an original, isn't it? Yes, they still use them in England for the breakfast. I've got water in the bottom. You should keep this hot with your sausages and your scrambled eggs. Interesting. It's very useful. Really nice. Clock hasn't struck the hour in the last ten years, if I'm to believe what Mark Fleming told me. Why is it angled away from the wall like that? I don't know. Somebody must have moved it. Lizzie, very likely when she was dusting. Wait a minute. Did you know there's a door in this panel? No, no, I didn't. Oh, my gracious, so there is. Maybe it opens to a secret passage. Oh, well, certainly to a secret oh, something. Who knows, girls? Who oh, be about to stumble oh, on that missing million? Oh, oh this is. Oh, there's a panel. There must be some gimmick to it. There always is. Yes, yes, it moves. It moves. It moves. It moves. Oh! Calling car 11. Calling car 11. Proceed to the Oaks and Zenith Township immediately. A homicide has been reported. 
Okay. Proceeding to the Oaks. Notify the county coroner, Dr. Wells. Tell him to come to the Oaks at once. His throat has been torn by some creature with fangs or claws. That's his sign. We found it on the others he killed. I'd hoped those reports that he was up to his old tricks again were pure imagination, but apparently they're based on fact. He's come back. Back to the scene of his kills. Yes, that's who I mean. That's who did this. The bat. Who found Mark? We all did. And his Dale and Judy and I. Lizzie was in the dining room. This is my new housekeeper, Jane Patterson. You know, she worked for John Fleming. I know her. Where were you, Mrs. Patterson? In the kitchen, cleaning up. I cooked the dinner tonight. Did you know that the secret closet was here? No. It was behind the grandfather's clock. Well, it was I who found it, really. Noticed the clock had been moved and the door wasn't quite closed. I'll get it. Who is it? Mark Fleming. Hmm. This coroner, you saw the same wounds on the others. How long's he been dead? Oh, I'd say about a half an hour. Do you believe it was the bat? That's a bat's trademark. Hmm. Perhaps he's still in the house. That's possible. Why should he be? Because he's looking for something, and like you, he believes it's here. And he's a persistent killer. I would advise you to get out of this house as quickly as possible, notwithstanding our expert police protection. Have you called the morgue? They're on their way here. Oh, good. I want to examine the body before they get here. Uh, may we take it into another room? Yes, to the sunroom in the back. Thank you. Give me a hand. Excuse mm -hmm. me. Where have you been? Well, madam, it was... Has it been an accident? There's been a murder. Mark Fleming, the young man from whom I leased this place, was killed here tonight. They know who did it? Well, they... They believe it was the bat. I'm sorry I had to use the front door, Miss Van Gorder. But I forgot my keys, and when I rang the bell at the kitchen door, there was no response. Oh, uh, this is Warner, Lieutenant. He's my butler. He was my chauffeur. Why did you promote him? Well, it's very difficult to find a butler. They don't like service in the country. Have you been a butler before? I've served in many capacities, sir, but this was my night off and I forgot my keys. I heard that part. What time did you leave the house tonight? Oh, about 6.30. I had dinner at Wiley's Roadhouse. Mm -hmm. Can you prove where you spent the rest of the evening? I can try. Try hard. And don't leave the house. I'll get to you later. Very good, sir. I shall be in my room, Miss Van Gorder, if you need me. Yes, Warner. Surely you don't think he's... Warner and I have met before. I can't recall where or when. But I will. There'll be a crew here shortly from headquarters, dusting for fingerprints, taking photographs. But in the meantime, Mrs. Patterson, you aren't leaving the house tonight, are you? No, Lieutenant. Don't. I'll talk to you in the morning. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night, Miss Patterson. Dale, I was with Mark Fleming this afternoon when you talked to him about the floor plans of this house. I heard him tell you he was coming here tonight. Dale called him at my request. She told me he was coming. Who else should I tell you that? Judy, Lizzie. And that nice Dr. Wells. Dr. Wells? There are a few killers who kill for the fun of it. The bat very likely is a mental case, and I'm convinced that his crimes are motivated by his mania for personal gain. 
There's a million dollars at large. And he's going to keep on hunting for it until he lays his hands on it. Now, these young ladies are staying here tonight? Yes, they're my house guests. Well, when my crew arrives, we'll be busy for a while. So I'd suggest that, that you... we go to our rooms? That's a very good idea. Come on, girls. What about a police guard for this house tonight, Lieutenant? You've got one. I'm going to cover this place tonight from the attic to the basement. If the vet makes another call, I'll have a little surprise for him. Who, uh, who is he? Have you any idea? He could be anybody. So far, there are clues to his identity, but nothing we could take before a jury. I am afraid we must look higher than the criminal world. He may be a merchant, lawyer, doctor, scientist. One of the pillars of his community. Ladies, lock your doors tonight. Stay behind them. I promise you, you'll be safe. Good night. Good night, you did. young. Well, Doctor, do you agree it was the bat? In my report, I shall say the death was caused by the same technique used in the other killings. A paralyzing blow to the throat, followed by severe lacerations of the jugular, resulting in excessive hemorrhage. In a layman's language, he didn't know what hit him. Oh, he knew. But he didn't have time to think about it. Staying here tonight, Andy? Well, until I check the doors and windows, but uh, I'll be back bright and early in the morning. Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom of night stays these couriers from the swift completion of their appointed rounds. A lot of people are due for a shock when I close this case. Yes, I'm sure they are. Good night, Andy. Don't get hurt. Good night, Doctor. You know, I think we'd better let you get some sleep. Oh, Lizzie and I share this room for mutual protection. You know, one night, a storm blew the wires down, put the lights out, and I went out the next day and bought a half a dozen of these things. You better take one with you, Dale. Oh, thank you. We'll go across the hall now. Are you sure there's nothing else you need? Oh, no. Quite sure. We'll be all right. Well, if anything bothers you, you just sing out, and two strong women will come to your rescue. <laughs> oh, nothing will bother us. Not with Andy on the job. No. Well, good night. Good, good night, 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 night Stephen. Don't worry. Everything will be all no, right. We won't. Good night. Good night. I think I'll sleep tonight. Me neither. All I can see is poor Mark Fleming staring at us. I thought that when people died, their eyes closed as in sleep. Don't think about it. I'll bet you're thinking about it. No, I was thinking of my poor husband sleeping in jail tonight. Oh, Judy, I love him so much.
What's that noise? Oh, I don't know. I kind of fell half asleep. For a moment, I thought it was something from a dream. It's somewhere in the house. Yes, on the floor above. Not directly over us. Probably a room overlooking the driveway. Should we call Miss Van Gorder? She'll hear it. How can she help but hear it? Oh, besides, we don't want her to think we're a couple of hysterical women. Well, I'm about to become one. Oh, I've had it for one night. Dale, you're not going out in that hall. I want to know what's happening up there. But Lieutenant Anderson said if we stayed behind our locked doors, we'd be safe. Vic isn't safe locked up in that jail. Oh, but Suppose that stolen money is in this house. Mark Fleming seemed to think it was. Maybe that's what somebody's looking for. Don't you hear that awful noise up there? Now, Lizzie, Lizzie, you've just got to stay awake. The house phone and the outside phone wires have been cut and we can't get help. Where's that policeman? Oh, I don't know. Something must have happened to him. Now, go on, get on your robe. Oh, Dale, please don't go up there. I've got to. Think what it could mean to Vic. Now, you stay here. Oh, no. If you go, I go. Please let me go with you, Dale. Will you warn me if anyone comes? I'll oh, give you a moment. Now wait. the bat. He caught her at the head of the stairs. We saw him rushing down the stairs as we came out of the room. I hurled that after him. I hit him, I believe. I'm going to cover this place from attic to basement, you said. Well, what were you covering when that poor child was murdered? Where were you? I saw a man outside in the grounds. I went out there and hunted him. I heard him in among the trees, and so I followed the sound of him as far as the brook down near the back road. And then I lost her. I'd rather give my own life than have this happen to Judy. But I told you to stay in your rooms and lock your doors and stay there. What was she doing at the head of those stairs? That was my fault. They heard a strange noise. Heavy pounding in one of the rooms on the third floor. We all heard it. I wanted to see what it was. Judy, I wish she wouldn't let me go out by myself. 
I made her stay on the balcony. What about your new butler? Oh, well, he's in his room, I suppose. Oh, Mrs. Patterson. Oh, yes. Did you know what happened here? No, sir, but I heard the screams. I went to call Warner. We have rooms on the same floor, but he wasn't in his room. His bed hasn't been slept in. If Mrs. Patterson heard the screams, Warner could certainly hear them. You're quite right, sir. I heard them. Oh, you did. And where were you? Outside, in the grounds. Miss Holland has been murdered. No. Oh, so you're surprised. Shocked. Well, I've seen better performances. I remember you now. Your name's not Warner. I've got a circular in my office with your picture on it. The Chicago police not so long ago were hunting for you in connection with the robbery. You're right again, sir. And they found me and they tried me and I proved my innocence and I was acquitted. That could have been a lucky break. Where were you when this child was killed? I told you before, sir, outside. What were you doing there? I was following you. I saw you leaving the house, and it seemed that you were hunting someone. I thought you might need some help. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. I followed your flashlight down through the trees. Then it disappeared. And then suddenly, as I was staring out into the darkness, I was struck by something on the back of the head. The next thing I knew, I was lying on the ground. I realized I'd been knocked out. I wish you had been knocked out. But then we'd have found you with your mask still on your face. You were hit here in this house, with this poker, as you were rushing down those stairs after that child was oh, killed. Oh, no, sir. You can't pin this on me. I'm not the bat. I've never killed. I couldn't kill. I won't take the rap for this. case for the county coroner. You see, the bat came back. Why did you come back, doctor? Well, I, I had an accident uh, about a mile down the road. The right rear wheel of my car came off and I plunged into the ditch. This was the nearest house, so I came here to call for help. I thought I'd find you around, Andy. Physician, heal thyself. You must have been hit by something on the back of your head. I told you I had an accident. So you did, doctor. So you did. I could be wrong. But maybe I'm not. We shall see. All right, dear, let's start a new chapter. For days, the murders held the headlines. Lieutenant Anderson grilled us and ransacked the house from top to bottom. Warner was not placed under arrest, but his every move was watched. At night, except for a detective on guard in the house, the police and the reporters left us alone. And on one of those nights, without telling Lizzie or anyone else, I pursued a secret investigation of my own. It was in an empty room on the third floor where we kept our trunks and other things.
put him up there. It's a bright idea to kill me in my own lab and let people think that I'm the bat. But you had to kill me first. What was it to be, ambush? And clever as you are, you're not smart enough to do that. Nor were you smart enough to find the money, though you came quite close to it. But I know where it is. And when you're dead with that sign pinned on your chest, I'm going to collect it and live happily ever after. He destroyed himself. How true that will be. Well, goodbye, Bat. Here's a serum that will heal you whether you're rabid or not. <laughs> wrong. This Cornelia. This Cornelia. going at this time of night. Davenport, Mr. Davenport, oh, a fine thing. The door unbolted, the chain off, and you asleep on the job. Wait till Lieutenant Anderson hears about this. Come on, wake up. What's the matter with you? I don't know. I don't know. My head hurts. My whole body's numb. Here, here, take a sip of this. Try to snap out of it. I'll be back in a minute. I'm terribly worried. I can't find Miss Cornelia anywhere, and something's happened to the policeman. I don't know what. Get Warner. Bring him to the drawing room. Tell him we need him. Are you all right now? Yeah, I'll be all right in a minute. I remember now. I took a drink of wine from that decanter there. Miss Van Gorder told me to help myself. She wouldn't put nothing in it? Well, somebody did. Somebody who knew I was on duty here. And it was somebody that got Miss Van Gorder. I can't find her anywhere. Upstairs, downstairs, or in the basement. I told the housekeeper to get warmer. Lieutenant Anderson will want to know about this. Hello. 
Yeah, this is Davenport at the Yolks. We've got trouble here. Well, for one thing, I was drugged. Yeah. But I must have been knocked out because a maid tells me Miss Van Gorder is missing. Well, you better call Anderson and let him know. He's not at home. Well, where is he? I don't know. What case? Dr. Wells. What else did they tell you about it? Oh, hurry, will you? We've got to find Miss Cornelia. Okay. Lieutenant Anderson is out on a case. Dr. Wells was found dead in a room next to his garage, murdered. Dr. Wells? There's something queer about the killing of Wells, but headquarters won't talk about it. Lizzie, one isn't in his room. There's no sign of him anywhere. And I was supposed to keep an eye on that guy. Where's Miss Cornelia? That's what I want to know. Wait a minute. Didn't you say that the chain and the bolt were off of the front door? I certainly did. Well, maybe Miss Van Gorder went outside. Oh, she never would. We better look. I can't breathe. It's no air. Miss Cornelia. Oh, Miss Van Miss Gorder. Miss Cornelia. Miss Cornelia. Miss Van Gorder. Look. There's a light in that room on the third floor. Were you up there tonight? Well, of course I was, but I turned the lights out before I came downstairs. Then Miss Cornelia might have turned them on again. That's why we're going to look first. Come on. Did you say, Miss Van Gorder? Oh, I can't. I just can't. Miss Van Gorder, which panel? We couldn't hear you. She said strike it. What difference does it make which panel? Strike them all! Take you to your room. Oh, no, you won't. I'm going to stay right here. I, I'm quite all right. Oh, how blessed it is to breathe without an effort, you know. No one knows how sweet the air can taste until someone shuts it off for a moment. That room is just like a box. When the mantelpiece closed, it seemed like all the air was drawn out of it. Look, there it goes again. Let it close. I can open it from in here. There's a control panel behind this blueprint. Electric motor under the trap door here. Once the door is open, you can keep it that way. I believe that the fireplace in this other room opens the same way. And it does. I tried to find this, but I couldn't find it. Yeah, it was back at this blueprint here. Well, it's, it's quite a setup. Too bad we can't open that safe in the same way. Take an expert to crack this box or a shot of nitro. Oh, maybe, maybe that's what the bat had in mind. Could be. Seems he's on the prowl tonight. Miss Van Gorder, Warner has disappeared. And Dr. Wells has been murdered. Dr. Wells? Lieutenant Anderson's on that case right now. Well, does he know what's happened here tonight? They got word to him. He'll be here any minute. <laughs> The garage is on fire. Scott, look at that. Lizzie, put that light out in the other room. Now, where are you going? 
to report the fire. Well, you just stay right here. Let me send go to the garage. Well, let it burn. You watch the stair. Can't you see that fire was set to get us out of the house? Out of the house? Were you talking about the... Yes, yes, I'm talking about the bat. Now that the lights are out, he'll think his trick has worked, and we've gone. He'll be here any minute. Well, so will Lieutenant Anderson. I hope so, but the bat will be here first. And he'll kill again if we're in his way. We've got to be as clever as he is. <laughs> You'll be safer downstairs. I'll take care of you. Well, the others can go, but I'm going to stay right here. All right, but get out of sight. Let's face it, ladies, and get it over with. Others have seen my face before they died, but I'll have to deny you that pleasure. This would make a good scene for your book, Miss Van Gorder, but I'm afraid you'll never write it. That is Warner. I could tell. You misjudge me, Miss Ellen. What? I don't like being a murder suspect, Miss Van Gorder. I was headed for a plane, but halfway to the airport, I changed my mind and came back. I'm glad that I did. the secret of the hidden room and was waiting to get into it and open up the safe. We found the money in it, a little over a million in tens and twenties and hundreds. <laughs> Good old Andy. With all his ill-gotten gains invested in bank stock, it's rather a clever way to hide stolen money, in the open, as it were, and so respectable. But don't try it. No matter how clever you are, you can't hide murder. Well, that's it, Dale. That's the end. <laughs>